So let's just step back for a minute and review the importance of uh, HPV 1618 genotyping and screening. Uh, this is a study from uh, Kaiser that was really the first major study that showed the relationship between the HPV genotype and the risk of developing precancer over time. In this particular study, women had their um, HPV status determined at baseline, and then they were followed for 10 years out to see who would develop precancer, and in this case it was CIN3 or greater. And as you can see on the graph, the women who are positive for HPV 16 at baseline had the highest risk for developing CIN3. At 10 years, it was 17.2%. And the next highest risk was in women who were HPV 18 positive. It was approximately 14%. And this was followed by women who were positive for the non-1618 genotypes. And their risk was all the way down to 3%. And as you can see, the, the risk for women who are HPV negative was very low, uh, less than 1%. And we can see very similar data in the more recent Athena study. Um, in, in this study, women, again, had their HPV status determined at baseline, and then they were followed for three years. And you can see, again, that women who were positive for HPV 16 had the highest risk of CIN 3 in three years. It was 25%, which means one out of four women would be diagnosed with CIN 3 within three years of testing positive for HPV-16. And again, the next highest risk came with those women who were positive for HPV-18. That was 11%. Uh, the 12 other non 16-18 genotypes risk was 5.4%. And in women who are HPV negative, again, the risk was very low, not quite zero, but 0.3%. So again, uh, this is not a population that you want to lose to follow up because these are the women who are at the highest risk of developing uh, CIN3 or greater in a relatively short period of time. Now this was in the overall population. If we confine the, the Athena analysis to just women with negative cytology, we get the same result. Those women who were positive for HPV 16 at baseline had the highest risk, over 15%. Uh, HPV 18 was next at nearly 6%. The 12 others were at 3%. And again, HPV negative was very low. So this is a good reason not to want to lose the women who are 16, 18 positive to follow up. So let's just summarize this section. Um, we can say that noncompliance with cervical cancer screening follow-up is a significant problem, and the compliance is poorest after a negative PAP and a positive HPV result. Co-testing with HPV 16-18 genotyping identifies women at the highest risk, and immediate colposcopy of women HPV 16-18 positive decreases the risk of loss to follow-up of those most likely to have or develop precancer.